I don't. I would not call it a mistake by Holmes. I, I think you could say he was being overly cautious or overly prudent. But this is what I don't get. Listen, I would have loved a pass rusher. Of course, if you follow the Lions, oh, would you like a pass rusher? Sure. Can I get one? What's the cost? So, of course, you're disappointed from that standpoint. But it's so weird, and this is such an evolution for Lions fans and media and everything else, that are we really – Sweating, so to speak, over Montez Sweat or Chase Taylor. Are we really boiling down this lion situation to a one-year window? Got to get it this year. Got to beat the Eagles and the 49ers and the Seahawks and the Cowboys this year or, or, or nothing. Now, I understand that windows close at times. and But this, this is not like get one guy, go for it, or bust. Get this one guy, or you don't have a shot at all. No. I, I agree that it didn't seem like it would be mortgage in the future at all. Right. It's not like an F the, the Rams F the picks thing. It's you're talking, especially for Chase Young. It's a third round pick, and if he doesn't sign, you get a compensatory anyway. I know, but it's not even about the pick. It's about the roster. Like I think they do think when they get Josh Pascal and James Houston back, and that they will have more of a pass rush. Uh, one of the players that was moved yesterday, Chase Young, does have a checkered reputation, sh- shall we say. I mean, the number two pick in the draft didn't even get the fifth-year option picked up uh, by the team that drafted yeah, but him. That was his injury. It's, but still, they they moved on from him now, right? And, and And that's a team that had both those guys, Montez Sweat and Chase Young and... Did they ever uh, really do anything wins wise? And listen, I'm I'm not. I agree. I would have loved to. I think people are freaking out over a couple of those names, and as if this is the only window you had, which isn't the only window you have. Right. So you wouldn't break a chair over it, basically. <laughs> no, I was just watching that video uh, a moment uh, moments ago. I thought they were tricky because they made me sit in that chair during crosswalk, and I thought it was going to collapse again but it's fine now right yes i mean if fine. i survived it, yes. anybody can survive that's, in it. that's true all right so <laughs> what do the what do you want if there's one thing that the lions need to fix in the bye week uh, knowing that the roster is what it is right now what's the one thing you want to see them do better against the chargers than they've done through the first eight weeks well this is what's going to be interesting uh, mr jansen and and by the way i do like getting donovan people's jones not who he is, but what he is. Seemingly a dependable backup receiver. He did have, what, uh, 700, almost 800 yards, 700 yards of receiving last year. Just over 800, yeah. Yeah, 800, right. So I do like that. Um, But here's what they're going to have to do. And and I'm not technical enough, so maybe Jansen can help me on this. You saw Aaron Glenn adjust defensively for the first, a a little bit against the Raiders, although it was easy to do with a statue back there, Jimmy Garoff, a, a statue with like pigeon stains on him. Oh my God, was he bad? But he did start sending more guys. He did start blitzing. They did get six uh, sacks. And I think he, I don't know specifically, but it seemed like he blitzed more than he has all year. Maybe they have to stop thinking idealistically and look more realistically. They feel like they have a lot of pass rushing dudes on that defensive line and more guys coming. But if it's not revealing itself, then adjust and send more guys and and they're gonna rotate more guys in as they trade for one. They, it or, or Stoney the trade deadline is passed. I know. Let it but but like they they bench guys, Levi Anzarike and Isaiah Bugs benched and stuff. They are making adjustments, which leads me to believe they knew they could have used another one. Uh, but they didn't. And I do think in this case it sounds wimpy, but in this one particular case, I do think you have to trust Holmes on this because well, you know he would have gotten one if he felt it was worth it. I, I agree. I'm, I'm going to trust Brad Holmes. The, the the change or the shift that we need to see from Aaron Glenn isn't necessarily, hey, when you bring blitzes against a statue um, and against a, a very bad offensive line is, how do you just stop a quarterback that's mobile? Well, that's the question that pretty much – Nobody in the NFL can really answer, right? Like, does anybody really completely shut down those guys? Uh, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, or whoever, or uh, even uh, what's his uh, Geno Smith? 
Um, but you're right. That's that's part of it. But, but again, I defer to John, who I, I think he played in the NFL or something like that. Yeah. Um, games. <laughs> yeah. Is like, do great pass rushers, are they necessarily good against really mobile quarterbacks? Isn't that, doesn't that often get defeated by the mobile quarterback just escapes the pressure? Uh, part, like, partly, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's the answer to stopping mobile quarterbacks. The answer to stopping mobile quarterbacks is discipline and staying your rush lanes and fast linebackers and stuff. And, and you know, the Lions have not been good at it, but I don't know if a singular pass rusher changes that because they it's mitigated by the mobility.